I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, can we please have a roll call? Council President O'Halloran. Here. Council Member Rivera. Here. Council Member Alverson. Here. Council Member Vaughn. Council Member Perez. Here. Council Member Prince. Here. Council Member McIrvin. Here. Roll call, Mr. Mayor, one absent. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council President O'Halloran. I move the council excuse the absent member. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that the absent council member be excused. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. And we're going to start off tonight with a proclamation. Uh, it's Farmer's Market Week. All right, proclamation of Farmer's Market Week. Uh, whereas farmers and ranchers provide Americans access to healthy food produced uh, locally and regionally through farmers markets, which are expanding and evolving to accommodate the demand for a diverse array of agricultural products. And whereas farmers markets incubate new farm businesses and young farmers with small budgets to hone their entrepreneurial skills, develop products, grow a loyal shopper base, and build experience to be successful and whereas farmers markets serve as vital hubs for rediscovering community, helping rural and urban communities reconnect with one another, stimulating local farming, farming and downtown businesses and creating more equitable economic opportunities. And whereas farmers markets offers uh, women, infants, children and seniors participating in WIC and senior farmers market nutrition programs, the opportunity to redeem their benefits for fresh produce and offer electronic benefits transfer technology for supplemental nutritional assistance program recipients in redeeming and matching their benefits. And whereas farmers markets uh, professionals work closely with health officials and risk managers to ensure safe shopping experiences and meet service demands that make community spaces safe, engaging, educational, and accessible to the public. And whereas the Rent Farmers Market is celebrating its 22nd season, uh, open each Tuesday through September from 3 to 7 p.m. in the beautiful downtown court, Piazza and Gateway Parks. Now, therefore, I, Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim August 6th through 12th, 2023, to be Farmer's Market Week in the City of Renton. And I encourage all residents to join me in the special observance and witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Renton to be affixed this 7th day of August, 2023. Signed, Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton. Mr. Mayor. Council President O'Halloran. I move the proclamation be adopted as read. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President O'Halloran, second by Council Member Prince, that the proclamation be adopted as read. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. It's hard to believe it's been 22 years. So uh, here to accept the proclamation is Carrie Olson. Thank you so much. I'd like to say a few words. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> As they said, our markets each and every Tuesday, June through September from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the beautiful Piazza Park in downtown Renton. Uh, we see anywhere from three to 4,000 shoppers each and every Tuesday, and we have about 60 different vendors. All are growing their produce in Washington State or producing their food or their craft items in Washington State. And many of the small business owners actually live or reside in Renton as well. And we always like to remind you that if you ate today, you can thank a farmer. Thank you. Now we're going to take a picture. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, we have one more uh, special presentation. Council Member Ryan McGurvin is receiving a Certificate of Municipal Leadership from the Association of Washington Cities. Ryan, congratulations. We have nothing to read. What's that? We have nothing to read. We have nothing to read. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to go back? <laughs> Okay, it's not working for me. <laughs> yeah. Am I right back there? Ruth must be yeah. seen in all her glory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now we just want to accept the left plate. Thank you. One, two, eighty three. And again, two, eighty three. And one, two, eighty three. Thank you. <laughs> 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 yes, actually, the, we can say a few words. So it 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 takes some dedication for. We've got a number of council members who have received this, um, and some have actually. I think Council Member Prince has the the next uh, level. Um, uh, hey, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Councilmember Perez, Prince, and O'Halloran have the advanced. I said a number of them. <laughs> <laughs> he was just doing the most recent one that he remembered. I was talking about the most recent one. So it does take a commitment on our council members, which um, it's time that they spend on their own um, taking courses and studying um, to, to re receive this certificate. So it's, uh, it's really a... Um, uh, a show of dedication to the role and the position in there and taking their job very seriously as a council member representing uh, the residents and actually knowing what they're doing up here and understand why they're doing it. And um, it's, it's, it's really good for all the council members to go through this. So thank you. And we are on to uh, the next, which is the public hearings. We have a public hearing, six year transportation improvement, uh, TIP. Yes. Good evening, Mayor, Council President O'Halloran, and members of the Council. I'd like to introduce Heather Gregerson, our Transportation Program Coordinator, and Ellen Talbot, our Transportation Planning Manager, who are here to present the annual required update of the city's six-year comprehensive transportation, improve, transportation program. Heather. Great. Well, I'll first start uh, getting you. My name is Ellen Talbo, uh, Transportation Planning Manager, and I'm here with my colleague tonight, Heather, whom I'll let introduce herself. Um, we're here tonight to, pre to uh, present to you the 2024-2029 Six-Year Transportation Improvement Program, also known as the Six-Year TIP. The TIP document is, is a plan and is a planning document that we use, um, that we do as a requirement of state law, and as such, we update it every year. And more importantly, the TIP is our planning tool that we use to prioritize the implementation of projects and the associated phases of implementing those projects. Um, to that end, the first two years of the TIP are uh, typically funded and are, are tend to see more funding and um, neatly align more with our six-year uh, capital improvement program. And the outer years um, of the TIP are more representative of those projects that are seeking funding and uh, and sometimes can be unfunded. So without further ado, I'm going to hand things off to Heather and uh, we're here tonight to answer any questions you may have. And also we have Director Jim Seitz with us tonight who can also take any questions at the end. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council President, and City Council. As Ellen mentioned, my name is Heather Gregerson, and I am the Transportation Program Coordinator in Public Works, and I will pre be presenting the rest of the updates to the 2024-2029 Transportation Improvement Program, also commonly referred to as the TIP. The annual update of the TIP is how the Transportation System Division plans to meet the needs of the city and adjust to changing conditions while staying in alignment to city priorities. Oh. 
cancel that all out. Okay. No, no, just hit the uh, presentation mode in the bottom. Thanks to the minus sign. Yes. There we go. Okay. Changes to this year's document include an updated prioritization, project information and status, updated grants funding, the addition of several new projects, and removal of completed projects, updated page layouts, and we also added a new local potential local new funding source, the Transportation Benefit District. Working on the TIP is a continuous process throughout the year as projects progress forward and the city receives new funding. Tonight's adoption of the TIP essentially signals the start of work on next year's update. Each project or program is assigned a category type to help with organization and funding. Those categories include maintenance and preservation, projects that replace, preserve, or maintain transportation assets, operations and safety, projects that help with the safety and efficiency of traffic operations, non-motorized, which are projects that address pedestrian, bicycle, and transit networks, roadway corridor, projects that encompass multiple categories that typically result in large capital projects, and other programs and planning, which are projects and programs that involve regulatory compliance and other policy directives. Project aspects highlight that there are common threads across all items of the TIP. Each project or program page notes one or more of these goals that are behind the project descriptions. The following factors are incorporated to create the priority framework. The priority framework is used to create the prioritized tip list, where each project is carefully reviewed and scored against each of these criteria. Criteria bands include safety, plan implementation, system integrity, financial directives, and mitigative. This map shows the 2024-2029 tip projects. Uh, the pie chart shows how the TIP projects are divided amongst the neighborhood planning areas. The green pie piece at 25% are programs that are citywide or projects that are within multiple neighborhood areas. Funding status of each project can change very quickly from year to year. For example, if funding is made available by a new grant or when a major design milestone is reached. Candidates are projects that have no determined funding at this time or projects that are regionally significant but will be led by others. Some candidates are ones the city is currently looking for grant opportunities for. In the TIP priority ranking, funded or partially funded projects are generally at the top and candidate projects are generally at the bottom. The TIP identifies secured or reasonably expected revenues and expenditures for each of the projects included in the TIP to aid in future budget discussions. This graph breaks down the sources of funding for each year represented in this year's TIP, years 2024 through 2029. This is graphical in nature and does not show potential schedule adjustments of accelerated funding from grant awards. The annual TIP development is one step in updating and maintaining the transportation capital budget. Actual revenues and expenditures are reviewed and adjusted through each budget adjustment. Uh, the dark pink bars in this graph are grant funds that the city has been awarded. Grant processes are competitive and are not guaranteed revenues. This graph only reflects grants that have been awarded to the city and does not reflect grants that we have submitted and not received a notification on or grants that we intend to apply for. Uh, new and advanced funding. Uh, the Grady Way and Rainier Avenue Intersection Improvements Project received $750,000 in the 2023-2025 State Capital Transportation Budget for Planning Activities. And the Sunset Trail Project received a Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality Grant for Design and Right-of-Way for fiscal years 2025 and 2026. Uh, but the city was able to successfully advance those funds to 2023 uh, so that work could continue along the corridor without any delay. Transportation continues to be very busy with projects lined up for construction and design. For more detail, um, that can be found on each of the individual project pages within the TIP. Uh, this slide is intended to highlight projects that will be in construction in 2024. Um, some of these are new projects that we were able to identify sufficient local funding for, like the South 116th Sidewalk Project and the Maplewood Sidewalk Rehabilitation. 
Uh, other projects are projects that are currently in design or right of way that we expect to progress to construction by next year or larger projects um, that have a multi-year construction schedule like Rainier Avenue improvements or the Park Avenue North extension. Um, again, so the last couple of years, we've ended the presentation by um, showing some pictures of some of our completed projects for this last year. So these are pictures of our Bronson Way Bridge seismic retrofit and painting. This is the Duval Avenue Northeast Roadway Improvements Project. This project reconstructed and resurfaced the roadway along Duval Avenue Northeast from Northeast uh, 7th Street to Sunset Boulevard. And these are examples of improvements made in our Safe Routes to Transit program. It's an ongoing program. Uh, this program improves safety, convenience, and accessibility for people walking, bicycling, and using assistive mobility devices to connect transit services and facilities. Uh, recommended action for this evening is to approve the annual updates to the 2024-2029 TIP and to present the resolution for reading and adoption, which is on the agenda later under legislation. Uh, are there any questions? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I move we close the public hearing. I, I believe we have to um, ask about correspondence and take public comment if needed first. That is up next. Um, do we have any correspondence? Uh, we, we do not have any correspondence. I do have one person signed up, but I think they might be signed up also to um, speak at the regular council meeting, and that's Catrice King. Did you want to speak on this also? Or did you want to speak at the, at the during normal? Um, yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Okay. And we have no um, correspondence, nobody online. Okay. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council President O'Halloran. I move we close the public hearing. Second. Okay, it's been um, moved by Council President O'Halloran, seconded by Councilmember Prince, that the public hearing be closed. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. All right, public hearing is closed. Now we're on to the next public hearing, establish uh, Transportation Benefit District. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Councilmember President <clears throat> O'Halloran, members of the Council, um, this is a to uh, discuss the proposed transportation benefit district that is before your, your consideration this evening. Jim Seitz, our transportation director, and Ellen Talbot, our transportation planning manager, will present this information. Hey, good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. Again, my name is Jim Seitz, transportation director for the city, and uh, being joined by Ellen, who will talk about some of our uh, plans that are in the works uh, for this particular project. Uh, the presentation outline, uh, we, we really wanted to start with um, the Transportation Benefit District. One of the requirements of forming one of these is to basically tell people what exactly it's for, what improvements would be done. So I'm going to start the presentation having Ellen talk a little bit about some of our pavement preservation needs and city sidewalk needs uh, throughout the city. Uh, then I'll jump into uh, the funding options we have, uh, in particular the Transportation Benefit District, uh, the formation requirements of the district, and the future funding options uh, that we would have for meeting our transportation needs. And it is a very lengthy process, the formation and actually leading up to the generation of revenue. So we'll talk about the next steps in that process as well. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Ellen to talk about the transportation improvement plans that we have in the works. Thank you. Uh, and as Jim mentioned, I will just walk through um, the our pavement uh, preservation program and, and sidewalk uh, needs that we've identified. So as shown on the slide, the city has 320 center line miles and 753 lane miles, but the gist being that the high cost of repair and replacement of pavement throughout the city's numerous mileage of road network makes uh, pavement one of the city's higher value assets. And in the transportation division, one of our goals is that of striving to preserve and maintain the useful life of our pavement quality to maximize our value and quality of the network. Oh, can, can you speak directly into the mic? Yeah. Thank you. So to that end, we've developed a 10-year pavement preservation plan. The plan largely uses a ranking system known as a pavement condition index or PCI to assess and rank the quality of the pavement of our roads. 
uh, where a segment of roadway with a score below 55 is considered poor to very poor condition in some cases, a score between 55 and 70 is considered fair to moderate condition, and a score above 70 is considered pretty, fa fairly good and pretty good condition. Um, in general, maintaining a score of 70 or trying to bring up a PCI score up to 70 is a pretty common goal for most cities and for uh, for Renton as well across and, and for cities across the region. Uh, through our 10-year pavement preservation plan, uh, we are assessing our most distressed roads and assessing the type of best treatment that best gets us to um, meeting our PCI and maintenance goals. So the map on this slide is more accessible through the story map link, which I'm going to click in just a moment. Uh, and this link, the story map is a smaller website which walks through more detail of the uh, city's pavement plan. And I won't spend too much detail. We can see this. Uh, I won't go through this website, but um, but the the gist here being is that you can um, spend time with this interactive map and and uh, click in and zoom and view the uh, recommended year of treatment and the recommended type of treatment for um, the road that you're interested in. Um, as far as the asset condition goes for the system. On the left side of the, of the slide, you're seeing the average PCI score of our road network, which averages between 55 to 70, or just under moderate condition, which is shown by the purple bar there. And the other portions of our road network scoring in worse condition, shown in the uh, orange and bright green bar there. The graph on the right side of the slide is showing the types of roads that are experiencing the highest need of maintenance, and that being our local roadways. Um, in the past and currently, we tend to uh, address pavement condition uh, on our larger and busy, busier arterial streets, but uh, and we do that by pursuing grant funds or through uh, specific capital projects. But our local streets are not eligible for grant funds, and so uh, we look we we need to look to a, a local funding source for those types of roads. So we propose to to achieve those goals in the following way. We currently budget approximately 600,000 towards pavement rehabilitation using our city maintenance crews and combining that with an estimated 1.5 million in revenues from the transportation benefit district through an annual overlay contract would provide for a total of 2.1 million that could be used for annual pavement preservation across the whole road network. In addition, we would continue to pursue grants or address needs through um, specific capital projects and private sector contributions would still be collected or roads would be improved through uh, required private development improvements. Uh, the Transportation Benefit District funds also intend to target improving our non-motorized infrastructure, specifically sidewalks and other features that improve walkability through our neighborhoods. The image on this slide is a snippet of the interactive website we've developed to engage with the public and demonstrate how we are going about identifying and prioritizing areas in need of sidewalk and walkability infrastructure, such as crosswalks or mid-block crossings. Um, the link to this, which I'm going to click into now. The link to this story map is available on the city's Facebook page, and I'll just kind of quickly scroll through it. Um, you can see it contains uh, an interactive map to scroll in and identify missing sidewalks. Also, you can take a survey um, and further co pinpoint comments on, on uh, your preferred street. Um, so far, we've observed almost up to a, hundred, a couple hundred site interactions, and we are continuing to work on prioritizing the implementation of improvements before the end of the year. And so with that, I will hand things back to uh, Director Seitz. Okay, back to the actual formation of the Transportation Benefit District and the draft ordinance that you have before us. Uh, the state allows the city or county to 
form a transportation benefit district by ordinance. That's what we have before us is a draft ordinance. Uh, the couple of uh, requirements in that ordinance it must specify the boundaries of the district and it must uh, identify the transportation improvements that will be funded. And that's why we spent the first part of the presentation talking about what the, we're proposing as far as what would be funded. And it, uh, that ordinance actually adds a new chapter to the written municipal code. Uh, it would be chapter 527, uh, the written transportation benefit district. It has five sections to it. Uh, the first section establishes the transportation benefit district and it designates it as citywide uh, for our boundary. And part of that is because of the funding that we're recommending uh, requires it to be citywide uh, boundary. Uh, second the section is the governing board. This uh, basically designates the city council as the governing board for this separate independent uh, district. Uh, then the third section uh, identifies the powers of the district. These are authorized in the, the RCWs that the authority to raise revenue for transportation purposes, uh, very broad uh, purposes in transportation. Also to identify some of the administrative roles like the uh, finance administrator will serve as the secretary treasurer uh, for the district. Uh, also talks, uh, the next section talks about the use of the funds. Uh, it actually authorizes the use for anything allowable under 3673 under RCWs. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's a very broad range. Uh, we're actually designating our TIP as all eligible projects uh, for funding for this with the emphasis on uh, the overlay program and the walkway program. Uh, finally, uh, under the dissolution uh, section, uh, most of these districts either uh, dissolved under when they pay off their debt or when the function is no longer necessary. For these annual programs, we're assuming they're always going to be necessary, so we would always want to have a transportation benefit district revenue to fund those programs. Uh, next, to talk about the uh, uh, the ways uh, of funding uh, that are eligible for the Transportation Benefit District. Most of the cities either use uh, vehicles license fees or sales tax or a combination of the two. Uh, there has been some changes in the legislation of what we uh, can do under our authority. And uh, one of the important designations up on your screen right now is that now councilmatically, uh, the city council can uh, uh, impose a one-tenth of one percent sales tax without voter approval for up to 10 years at a time. And that's a renewable. You can go to second 10 years and, and on and on. Uh, to give you an idea of how much revenue that would generate, uh, the finance uh, department uh, generated the numbers for 2022. If we had had that in place at that time, it would have generated almost $4.4 .4 million of revenues for our transportation improvement unfunded needs. Uh, there was one other uh, bit of a change in the legislation as well. It allows under voter approval uh, an increase from 2.2% uh, to 0.3% increase in voter approval of a sales tax. Uh, so the budget uh, that we're proposing, uh, because sales tax aren't going to be guaranteed to come in at $4.4 million every year, we're being conservative, thinking that the Transportation Benefit District would generate at least <coughs> $3.5 million annually. Uh, we're proposing to uh, put 1.5 million of that towards pavement preservation and uh, 2 million of it towards the walkway plan. Uh, but again, everything that's within the tip could be eligible for funding as well. Uh, this is a rather uh, lengthy uh, I slide that as far as the bullet points, but I just wanted to emphasize this is a process. This is the first step in the process. This is the actual ordinance that uh, puts together the Renton Transportation Benefit District. Uh, we're here tonight for the public hearing and the first reading of the ordinance. There will be a second reading of the ordinance uh, next week. Uh, after it's adopted, we'll have it published within the uh, C uh, Seattle City Times. Then five days after that, it actually will take effect. Uh, then the next steps will be for the city to actually assume the authority of the Rent and Transportation uh, Benefit District. And the reason uh, we're recommending that is that it uh, allows you to conduct uh, the district uh, business under your normal uh, legislative agenda under council, rather than have to sit, stop your meeting and then have another meeting just for the district. Also allows people to, at public comment periods to comment about the business of the district at the regular council meetings as well. Uh, so. And one other uh, important, uh, uh, we're going to bring this to the council in September and it'll be effective uh, October 17th. And we're trying to get it under a 60 day from the, the, uh, the actual 
uh, generation of the benefit district and the point in which we assume the authority of it under 60 days because that saves us some money as far as having a separate audit for the district and additional staff time for finance to do all the accounting for the district. This would just be under our normal budget uh, cycle and audits as, as regard to that. Uh, then the final step is the actual uh, imposing of a one-tenth of one percent sales tax and that would be coming to council around November and uh, would become effective uh, December 19th. And uh, we're trying to meet a deadline of uh, January 16th at the very latest to notify um, the State uh, uh, Department of Revenue that we have this ordinance in effect now so they can start collecting sales tax that would start April 1st of uh, 2024. And with that, uh, staff recommendation is to adopt the ordinance, adding new chapter 27, establishing a rent and transportation benefit district to title five of the rent and municipal code. And that concludes our presentation. Questions? Nope. Okay, uh, I don't have any correspondence or anybody signed up. Is there any correspondence? No correspondence, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council President O'Halloran. I move we close the public hearing. Second. Okay, it's been moved by uh, Council President O'Halloran and seconded by Council Member Prince that we close the public hearing. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. All right, the hearing is closed. And we are on to the administrative report. All right, good evening, everyone. Rent and Roots Farm to You is a free food delivery program for U.S. service veterans who live at Compass Housing Alliance, a veterans housing facility in Renton. The program was created in 2022 by Carrie Olson, Farmer's Market Coordinator, and two of the city's AmeriCorps Vistas, Sophie DeWitt and Victoria Kvetic. This program offers healthy food to folks in need, while at the same time providing more sales opportunities for local Washington farmers. Funds from the Veterans, Seniors, and Human Services Levy grant are used to purchase fresh produce on Market Tuesdays. The next day, participants choose fruit and vegetables in a farmer's market venue at the housing facility and receive recipe cards and helpful tips for keeping produce fresh. Cooking demonstrations are offered by WSU's Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program Education program at the housing facility. For everyone's enjoyment in and around city parks and trails, patrons are reminded to be familiar with and follow park rules and regulations. Except for city-sponsored events, please note the following. Amplified sound, bounce houses, and alcohol are not permitted at any time. Vehicles are to remain in designated parking only. Uh, driving or parking on grass or sidewalks is prohibited. Groups larger than 50 people require a temporary event permit. All activities should cease when parks and trails close at sunset. For more information, contact Parks and Recreation Department at rentonwa.gov forward slash parks or 425-430-6600. Information about preventative street maintenance, traffic impact projects, road closures happening this week can be found at rentonwa.gov forward slash traffic. All projects are weather permitting and unless otherwise noted, streets will always remain open. That's it. All right. Thank you. Next up is audience comment. We have a number of people signed up. Uh, to speak tonight, when I call your name, please approach the podium. You'll have three minutes to speak. Um, please give your name, city of address, and what you'll, the topic uh, you'll be discussing. There's a timer right there in front. When the little light turns to yellow, please uh, start finishing up your, your thoughts there. So first up, uh, we're back to Catrice, uh, Catrice uh, King. Yeah. Good evening, and thank you very much for allowing me the time to speak. Um, I am from right up the hill on Smithers, uh, Renton, 1413 Smithers Avenue. I am here because of my concern over the overgrown vegetation and now the tent city that I see outside of my window, the uprising crime. I'm called from work. My daughter and my grandson are in a closet with a knife as a man is trying to break in. I've now gone to work from remote. I have a folder I would like to leave with the council showing the dust, debris, the stolen vehicles, this tent. Um, the rent PD was just there recently because stolen vehicle uh, near about ran into my vehicle. They're dusting it with princes involved in other crimes. Um, we're talking about preserving walkways and streets. I'm talking about pre preserving human beings' lives. I can't walk my dog because of the needles. 
I can't allow my grandchildren to play on the swing set. The vegetation is overgrown. I feel like I'm smothering in my own home. I can barely sleep because most crime happens at 3 a.m. It's near about two blocks from you all. Most of you drive by it. I reported to the rent response. They say, you didn't give me an address. Well, maybe when they put an address on their tent, I can give you their address. I don't know their address. I know that you see this. This is, it's unsanitary and I should not have to live this way. I pay taxes. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I help people. I work for Neighbor Care Health. We have a homeless and housing outreach team. These people have been offered help. They don't want help because they don't want to follow rules. You can't take meth in there with you. I don't want a meth lab next to my grandchildren either. Something needs to be done. The fact that six S uh, rent put ED cars there, investigator dusting it, a uh, canine officer, they saw the tent. They finished their duty, went back to where they went from. They'll be down in the Uwajamaya and Big Five parking lot chilling. They'll sit right in that uh, business right across from me. They see these cars. They do nothing. They do nothing. What am I supposed to do? You're going to build roadways for people to leave Renton. That's what you're building roadways for, for people to leave Renton because you cannot sleep at night. You can barely work during the day. It's right here. It's right here on Talbot. They closed my cases because I didn't give them an address. This is unacceptable. I don't know what else to do. I do appreciate your time. And I don't know if I can leave this. This has fallen. So sorry for getting emotional. Thank you very much. Okay, next up is Karen Singh. Here. Okay, uh, Cheryl Danza. Good evening, Council. My name is Cheryl Danza. I am in Renton. Address is 711 South 4th Street. I am a business owner, property owner in downtown Renton. Um, my son is a veteran of foreign war at his young age, has been in battleground. I'm here with a voice of concern. Um, I've got some miscommunication along the way on what's happening in the near future. Um, about the connector and the parking lot across the street from the VFW Red House of Linear Park. I'm a number right up there with everybody else about renovating and beautifying Renton. I, I love Renton. Um, I remember when we arrived 23 years ago and everybody was talking about Renton's a diamond in the rough and we just got to polish it up and make it look beautiful. And so I know there's a lot of people trying to do that. I'm here to help with that too. But my concern is safety along with bringing, um, we want people to come to downtown Renton. I was at the VFW a few Mondays ago. Um, Mayor P Pavoni was there also, and it was, a, it was a full house. And it was very interesting to learn all of the concern about not only the parking, but possibly even the safety, getting people used to a parking garage down at the end of second and then what will they do in the future there was it was a little skewed because it was the farmer's market but we want Renton to be vibrant and that could be what it looked like every every day as far as that Monday or Tuesday a few weeks ago there was cars driving everywhere no parking um sorry if I'm jumping around um I'm just trying to get some understanding of what this will look like with the connector and the parking um, along with the safety for people if they were to need to drive to or park in the parking garage it's a beautiful parking garage it's great i've parked in there numerous times though so what is it can we have a clear picture of what the solution will be for parking um safety cars parked there for months 
at a time um, cited. I, I don't know if, if they'll be allowed to park there for days and days as it is now. Um, some of the concerns we just heard about, I um, just wanted to share this and hopefully get some clarification. This is my first time coming and speaking and just voicing the concern that I have and and letting you guys know and and see what see what happens and see what I can find out in the near future, hopefully, as well as a lot of the other people here. So I think that is everything. Again, thank you so much for listening. And um, this is my son here. He is a veteran, as mentioned, at his very young age. So thanks again. Thank you. Next up is Mark Peterson. There you are. Well, good evening. My name is Mark Peterson, 3103 Park Avenue North in Lower Canadale. I've lived there for over 20 years, and I represent a very passionate, organized, and energetic group of neighbors who, none of whom want an alley coming through their backyard. Um, so we have spent the past number of weeks presenting our neighborhood's concern over the potential construction of an alley between North 31st and North 32nd streets. And we voiced several worries to apprise you of our neighborhood concerns. Safety and security concerns, including emergency vehicle access to medical responses, traffic collisions, or fires that might occur in an alley right of way. Drug use in a secluded area, which we already experience in other close by areas of our neighborhood. Illegal dumping, also a problem. I just reported an incident last week on rent and responds. Um, the, cutting of, the cutting down of about two dozen mature trees, parking issues, traffic sightline problems, significant elevation changes within the block, conformance to the current neighborhood practice of front-facing garages, and the loss of our neighbor's sense of peace and tranquility. Through this process, we received conflicting versions of whose initiative it was to have an alley. The city claims that it's not their initiative, but both developers working within Block, fee, fi, block 15 excuse me, allege that CNED required them to create an alley behind their new developments. Referring back to previous comments before the council by, C, by the CNED director, pardon me, it was specifically stated that the intention was not to require alley access in mature neighborhoods like Kennedale. Our neighbors still don't understand why any entity would want to disrupt a quiet, lovely community like that of North 31st and North 32nd streets by tearing up backyards and all that entails by requiring an alley through the middle. We have asked you to consider what you would desire if this were your backyard. We have appreciated being able to voice our concerns to our Renton City Council members. And we know the weight of this issue has not been lost on you. We are looking forward to how this issue will be resolved and continue to hope the council will do the right thing in vacating the alley right away behind, uh, be, be, excuse me, vacating the alley right away back to our neighbors. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And next up is Paul Dutton. Good evening. My name is Paul Dutton. I live at 6174 Northeast Third Court. It's on the East Plateau area, in the eastern fringe of the city. Um, I actually wanted to talk about the uh, transportation improvement plan and the um, other one. I didn't realize there were multiple responses for the uh, commenting, but uh, that aside, um, my house backs up to Northeast Fourth Street. And as most of you may or may not know, that street is marked 35 miles an hour from end to end, from sunset up to 156 or wherever the city limit is now. Um, just being in such close proximity, I see cars driving 60, 70 miles an hour on that street routinely. 
Um, just two nights ago, there was a big wreck at the corner of 156, undoubtedly due to excess speed. Um, a couple weeks ago, there was a motorcycle accident at the corner of 148th, now Nile Avenue. Um, I don't know what the outcome of that was. It didn't look pretty. Um, there was another accident at the corner of 156 um, recently, and um, I've commented numerous times on the rent and response ad, and in unison with everybody else, it like things just get archived. Nothing ever comes of it. So I'm here in person now because I don't know what else to do. Um, I'm hoping that in the current update to the transportation improvement plan, you can include the passive traffic control methods that were approved by this council back in 2005, before my daughter was even born and she just graduated from high school. Um, those are measures similar to the ones that were just done on Northeast Duval Avenue that was shown in that presentation. Um, just, you know, traffic planner you know planners things things that make people close feel closed in and slow down so um yeah I, I know the police can't really do much as far as pulling people over um that doesn't really work one thing i requested was for a traffic study to be done you know using the hydraulic hoses so you know how how many cars you've got what lanes they're in how fast they're going doing it on and do it in conjunction with king county so that you get an accurate picture of the traffic coming up from Maple Valley, cutting across and going up to Vol and to Bellevue. I mean, in the morning it's atrocious, but drag racing in the middle of the night is bad as well. And I'm running out of time here. So um, anyway, I hope you can have some influence on this and appreciate your time. Thank you. And Kim, uh Lulius, Lulius. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. My name is Kim Lulius. I live at 1112 North 31st Street. I've lived there for 19 years. Uh, we've seen various emails to the city concerning opinions written about R8 and R6 zoning and the relation to affordable housing in Kennedale. The subject of developing the right of way has also been included in this discussion. One opinion implied the alley development was probably the only way that ADUs would be built driven by new houses with attached ADUs in their design that need rear alley access. I believe this logic is incorrect. The elimination of the alley right away enables ADU development. Existing homeowners, existing homeowner ADU development will be a major driver for incorporating ADUs into the lower Kennedale neighborhood now and in the near future. This is enabled by the PRADU program, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with. Eliminating the alley right away would allow some homeowners the ability to add ADU since more deeded rear yard setback would be available. Houses in the right of way zone would have at least 26 feet rear setback after alley vacation. They could utilize the city's Prado program. Uh, extra off street parking is typically available on legacy lots. The ability to include an ADU on one's property boils down to how the current resident sits in regards to easement actual lot size, and rear yard setback. I've gone through a detailed analysis to see if I can incorporate the smallest PRADU into my backyard. I'm a trained engineer with uh, experience in requirements and design. I'm a details kind of guy. Based upon my analysis, I currently can't build the smallest PRADU in my rear yard. If I were deeded half the 12-foot alley easement, I could build a 400-square-foot ADU and comply with all requirements de de uh, defined by the current building codes. The smallest PR ADU is 418 square feet. Keeping the alley easement on, on my block and others with the right of way will dramatically hinder any future homeowner driven ADU construction since the alley consumes six feet of rear yard setback. Each foot of rear, rear, rear yard setback is critical for reasonably sized ADUs. Vacating the alley has more potential to increase affordable housing via homeowner driven ADU development versus lingering redevelopment opportunities. Developers tearing down the closest thing to affordable houses. Uh, developers are tearing down the closest thing to affordable houses in our neighborhood. The results are houses over two million dollars. Developers have created house designs that incorporate ADUs without alley access uh, for our block. In fact, vacating the alley will not hinder any new alley incorp ADU uh, incorporation. Thank you. I, ha I have a copy of uh, the case study. I 
Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Okay, and last is um, Dutch Dutchman. Someday, right? <laughs> Deutschman. 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 Deutsch. 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 No, nine. <laughs> nine here, too. I thought you had it, man. thought you had it. Well, welcome back, you guys. I know you had a nice break going on, and thank you, Mayor and Council President and Council members. Uh, you know, I listened to that last, before the meeting started tonight, the survey. I thought that was awesome, the survey results that were going on and the questions that were asked, I thought were very good. So I was thinking maybe we can incorporate that removal of 84 parking positions in that survey somewhere and see how that comes out. So in the meantime, I have my own little survey here for you that we did. It's a petition to stop the removal of 84 parking stalls on Burnett Avenue South, as we all know. So I put this out. This is the test. And it filled up quickly. I put out six sheets. It filled up quickly. We have almost 80 signatures. I, I was very, very impressed by that. So and I'm impressed by the businesses coming on board to voice their opinion of what's going on. But we, there's going to be a solution. I know there will be a solution and a resolution. And that's all we're asking for. So I don't have a lot to talk about tonight. And you'll miss me next week because I have another meeting I have to go to. So I'll hand this over to Jason. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dutch Deutschman. You got it. <laughs> all right. Well, now you got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we have nobody signed up to speak online, so we're going to move on to the consent agenda. We have 18 items for council consideration. Are there any that council would like pulled for separate discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I would like to point, pull uh, item R. Item R. Mr. Mayor? Yes, council president. I move the council approve the consent agenda minus item R as Second. published. Okay, it's been moved by Council President O'Halloran, seconded by Councilmember Prince, that the consent agenda be a, approved as published minus item R. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. Councilmember McGurvin. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, item R is uh, the approval of a agreement for final design uh, for the uh, uh, 43rd Southwest 43rd Street Preservation Project, and as a matter of scheduling, we wouldn't be meeting again as a transportation committee until the middle of September, and so uh, we would like to get the ball rolling on this one um, rather than have that delay so we can uh, keep the project moving. Um, so I would move the council concur with item R. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember McGurvin, second by Councilmember Perez, that um, item R be approved um, as concur. All in favor signify by saying R. Aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Should ask for discussion, discussion but <laughs> sounds like there's none. So, all right, motion approves. Thank you. All right, we are on to unfinished business. Council President O'Halloran. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Rivera. No. Council Member Alverson. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Perez. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Perez. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member McGurvin. Still no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. All right. We're on to legislation. We have four resolutions, two ordinances for first reading. Okay, the first resolution is regarding the six-year transportation improvement program. Resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, updating and extending Renton's six-year transportation improvement program for the years 2024 through 2029. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember McGurvin. I move the resolution be adopted as read. Back on. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman McGurvin, second by Councilman Perez, that the resolution be adopted as read. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, the next resolution is regarding the setting of a public hearing for the Peterson Street vacation. 
A resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, setting a public hearing date regarding vacation of a portion of the east-west right-of-way through Block 15, C.D. Hillman's Lake Washington, Garden of Eden. This is the Peterson Street Vacation Petition, VAC 23001, and that is set for September 11, 2023. Mr. Mayor. Mayor McGurvin. I move that this resolution be adopted as read. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember McGurvin, seconded by Councilmember Perez, that the resolution be adopted as read. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, the next is regarding an amendment to our agreement with King County for Community Development Block Grant uh, Program. Resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to enter into the First Amendment to the Joint Interlocal Agreement regarding the Community Development Block Grant Program between the City and King County. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember McGurvin. I move this resolution be adopted as read. Second. Been moved by Councilmember McGurvin, seconded by Councilmember Perez, that the resolution be adopted as read. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, the final resolution is regarding another amendment uh, with the city and King County. Resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to enter into Amendment Number 1 to the Home Investment Partnerships Program Interlocal Agreement between the City and King County. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember McGurvin. Is that move that this resolution be adopted as, as well? Second. It's been moved by Councilmember McGurvin, seconded by Councilmember Perez, that the resolution be adopted as read. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, so we have two ordinances for first reading. Uh, the first is regarding the establishment of the Transportation Benefit District. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, establishing a transportation benefit district within the corporate city limits, providing for transportation improvements within the district, adopting a new Chapter 27, Rent Municipal Code, Title V, Finance and Business Regulation, uh, entitled Transportation Benefit District, and providing for severability and establishing an effective date. Mr. Mayor. I'm McGurvin. I move this ordinance be placed on second and final reading of the next council meeting. Second. It's been moved by Councilmember McGurvin, seconded by Councilmember Perez, that the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. The final ordinance is regarding a docket item for North 30th Street Comprehensive Plan Amendment and Rezone. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending the city's comprehensive plan land use map and the zoning map of the Renton Municipal Code by applying the residential high density land use designation and applying the commercial neighborhood zoning district to three parcels adjacent to North 30th Street, providing for severability and establishing an effective date. Mr. Mayor. Yes, yes Councilman Prince. I move the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Councilmember Prince, second by Councilmember McGurvin that the ordinance be placed on the second and final reading at the next council meeting. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. And we are on to new business. Council President O'Halloran. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. On Monday, August the 14th at 6 p.m., the Committee of the Whole will be meeting here in council chambers and via video conference. We have one item. It's design concept for the downtown pavilion market. And then Monday, August the 14th at 7 p.m., we have a regularly scheduled uh, council meeting here in chambers and via video conference. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Rivera. Yes, Mr. Mayor. The Community Services Committee will be meeting on Monday, August 14th to, uh, for the appointment of the Equity Commission at 315. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Alverson. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Perez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On August 14, 2023, at 445, the Finance Committee will meet via, in the Council Conference Room and also via video conference. There are 10 items on the agenda. First, agreement with Family Fresh for the Downtown Business District Clean Initiative. Two, Parks and Recreation Temporary Event Permit Fee Waiver Request. Three, 2023 Summer Meals Program in King County. Four, Amendment Number 2 to CAG-22-216 with King County Community Development for CDBG funds allocated to the Street Capes Improvement Project Phase 2 and revision, of the, of revision to the C-22-2 
BBG Funding Contingency Plan. Five, bid award to Downtown Core Street Escape Phase 2, Williams Avenue, South Constructions Contract, CAG-23-241. Six, communication engagement man management higher at step E. Seven, agreement with Yang Li and Wunsk Ian Li to forfeit real property located at 1621A 49th Avenue in Tukola, Washington. Eight, grant approval for Edward Barney, FY 2023, Justice Assistant Grant, nine vouchers and 10 emerging issues in finance. All right. Thank you, Councilman Prince. Uh, per usual, the Planning and Development Committee cannot keep up with the Finance Committee. Um, and so the Planning and Development Committee meeting uh, for March 14th is canceled. However, the Public Safety Committee will be meeting at 4 p.m. Um, in the Council Conference Room. Uh, we have three items on the agenda. Uh, agreement with the FBI for the Joint Terrorism Task Force. RRFA briefing and emerging issues in public safety. And that is all, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councilmember Gervin. No new wrap business, it up. Mr. Mayor. Okay. What's the list of the council? Move we adjourn. Second. Okay, it's been uh, moved by Councilmember Prince, second by Councilmember Rivera, that we adjourn so that Joanne can go watch Prices Right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Opposed, nay. <laughs> We're adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. I love that show. That was I'm good. all down. <laughs>